Hey, this is Kip, and in this video, we're going to learn how to use the new KLN 90B GPS in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This 1990s era GPS made its debut in the Black Square Beechcraft Duke. Since it's an open source avionics project, we can expect to see it added to more planes in the future, including the A2A Comanche. I'd also like to warn you in advance that we're pretty much going to be staring at this little tiny screen for the rest of the video. So here we go. The KLN90 does support using the world map to do your flight planning. So if you prefer to do it that way, you can choose your departure and arrival runway. And I'm going to go up here and change my flight type from VFR to IFR low altitude airways. And once we get into the plane, you'll see that all of these waypoints are carried over into the GPS unit automatically. Here we are inside the Turbine Duke, and if you happen to be flying the Duke, make sure you configure your avionics to use the KLN90 by pulling up the tablet down here at the left side of the seat, where it says Primary, change it to the KLN90, and then on the secondary side, you can choose whichever other avionics you want. Once you make your selections, click the Confirm button in the middle of the tablet. Once you get your avionics booted up, you should see the KLN90 come to life. It's got a couple startup screens here. First, we have the self-test, and then it'll get to this screen with the date time and it's prompting us to enter the current barometric pressure. I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard to automatically set my altimeter to the current pressure, which is 3005. Now we just put that in the GPS unit. If you use the outer part of the right knob, that'll move the cursor on the right side of the screen. And once you have the number highlighted, turning the inner knob changes the value. So I'm changing the 29 to 30 and we need a zero here and then finally the five. And I usually do this by pointing at it and then using my mouse wheel up and down to actually turn the knob. Now I need to turn it one more time to highlight the word approve. And once we do that, you can see it's flashing ENT, which means to hit the enter button right here to approve that change. And now it's giving us some information about the database expiration. Once again, we need to acknowledge that by hitting enter again, and then we're done with the initialization. Now let's learn about the layout of the GPS. You can see that the screen in the middle is drawn into two halves, basically. We have what's called the left page right here, where it says present position, and the right page over here. In the bottom left, it tells us the name of the left page, nav2, and on the right page, it's currently on airport page four. We can change the left or right half of the screen by using either the left outer knob or the right outer knob. So if we turn the left outer knob, we'll be changing the page from nav to calc, to stat, and so on. The labels here are kind of in a circular format so you know which one comes after the other. So if I turn that left outer knob, it'll change us from nav to calc. You can see here now it says we're on calc page one. Again, we're on stat page one, and now setup page one. Now the page number can be changed as well to see even more settings within that section. So for setup page two, we use the inner part of the knob. Generally, you wanna start with the outer part of the knob and then use the inner part of the knob. So I'm turning the inner part of the knob now until we get to setup page seven. You might actually wanna use this setup page because you can change the units from inches of mercury to millibars. And we do that by enabling the cursor. If I hit the cursor button on the left side, it turns on the left page cursor. If I hit the cursor on the right side, it turns on the right page cursor. So we basically have two active cursors if we want. Well, let's go ahead and turn off the right page cursor by hitting the cursor button again. And now on the left side, we can change what's highlighted by the cursor by using the inner part of the knob, just like we did with the barometric pressure. So if I turn the inner part of the knob, it'll cycle through the options here. So we can just choose between inches or millibars. Once we're done changing this setting, we can just turn off the cursor. These settings are made immediately. So we didn't actually need to hit the enter button like before with the barometric pressure. It just takes effect right away. Next, go ahead and use the outer knob until you reach the flight plan page, FPL. We can see here the four waypoints that came along from the world map. We have our departure airport, the two on-route waypoints, and then our destination. Now we're gonna delete this entire active flight plan. I know it's not that big, but we're gonna delete this and we're gonna put it in manually. So all you have to do is hit the clear button. It'll ask us to confirm deleting the flight plan by hitting the enter button. So we'll do that and that wipes out all the waypoints. Now all we need to do is start entering our waypoints by first enabling the cursor. So we'll hit the cursor button on the left side of the screen and we'll enter that same route that we just had. To start entering letters, you need to turn the inner knob. So I'll start turning that to the right until I see letters showing up. 
And if you're doing this with your mouse wheel, there's a trick where you can hold your left shift button down and that'll skip two letters at a time instead of going one at a time. All right, now that I have the K in, we're gonna change the location of the cursor by using the outer part of the knob again. We need to highlight the second character position. And now we'll roll the inner wheel again to put in the letter S. Yes, this can be tedious, but don't worry, there's a shortcut with keyboard mode that we'll look at in a second. But if I do put this in manually this way, you can see here when I get to the third letter and I put in G, it's already put in the F for me because there are no other possibilities at this point. Then we can just hit enter when we're done. And on the right page, it's gonna show us a confirmation of what waypoint we entered. It says Springfield Branson. I know that's correct. So I'll hit enter again to lock in that waypoint. Now we will use the magical keyboard entry mode. To use keyboard entry, you actually click on where it says cursor in the bottom left. So if you click cursor, it now says keyboard. We can now start typing using our keyboard and you'll see the letters automatically go to where the cursor is above. Once you're done, you need to right click anywhere on the GPS screen to turn off keyboard mode. If you don't do that, you won't be able to click anything else. So make sure you right click the screen when you're done. Now we can hit enter twice. You'll see here I put in a VOR just to show you it shows the names of the VOR as confirmation as well. We'll hit enter a second time to lock that waypoint in. And now we can just repeat those steps. So click the word cursor in the bottom left, type in the waypoint name, right click anywhere on the GPS screen, and then hit enter twice. If you happen to be entering a waypoint that has duplicates in the database, then it will prompt you to select the correct one during this process. But we can just keep going. I'm in keyboard entry mode again. You type, you right click on the GPS screen, hit enter twice, that'll add it. And then finally we'll do the last one, click cursor, type using our keyboard, right click to turn off keyboard mode, and then hit enter two more times. This is Walnut Ridge, that's our destination. And now our flight plan is done. Next, let's take a look at nav page five on the right side. So this is showing a north up orientation, 40 mile radius. And if we turn on the cursor here on the right side, we can actually change these settings by using the outer and inner knobs. You can change to desired track or current track or heading but I'm gonna leave it on north up map. And then if you use the outer knob to move the cursor over to where it says 40, you can zoom in and out, change the range of the map to see more. In this small map size, you can see that each waypoint is just referred to by its number that corresponds with the number over here on the left. So we have waypoints one through five. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back down to the default of 40 miles and then hit the cursor button to turn the cursor off again. Now this small map size is pretty ridiculous, I know, especially when you're zoomed out and not like full screen like this. But luckily for us, there's what's called super pages. And there are two of them that we can configure in the KLN90. All we have to do is load up nav on both the left and the right side. So right now I have nav page two on the left and nav page five on the right. But both nav page one and nav page five can become super nav pages. And we do that by changing both sides to the same page. So if I turn it to nav one on both sides, we get super nav page one. And it's just a larger version of nav page one where we see our current leg, the course deviation, and some information about that leg like the distance, ground speed, and so on. Now let's check out super nav page five by changing both sides to nav five and here we will get a large map with a little sidebar. This basically resembles a Garmin GNS 530. So on the left side, we have all the information about our current leg. And on the right side, we have a larger map. And instead of the numbers, it actually shows the name of each waypoint. When you're in this super page mode, you still actually use both cursors. So the left side cursor actually controls the range. And it also lets you change some of those pieces of data shown on the left, like desired track, We'll do that later actually when we get into VNAV. And the right side cursor, if we turn that on, gives us some more options that we didn't have on the small version of the map. So we can show or hide VOR waypoints, NDBs, or airports. And it's up to you how many of these you add. It can get kind of cluttered, so it's all up to personal preference. I'm now back on the flight plan page and I wanted to quickly show you how to delete a waypoint. All you have to do is turn on the cursor, highlight the waypoint and hit clear. It'll ask for confirmation. And all you have to do is press enter to confirm deleting that waypoint. Now we're back to where we started from the flight plan that was on the world map. 
Now, what if I want to save this entire flight plan? So let's go ahead and go over to flight plan page one. This is our saved flight plan number one. You can scroll all the way through and see that you have a total of 25 of these that can be saved. So if I want to save the active flight plan, which is zero, into flight plan one, all I have to do is highlight this thing that says load flight plan zero. So we'll hit the cursor. We'll use the big knob to move up to highlight where it says load flight plan zero and hit enter. And now flight plan one has a copy of the active flight plan, flight plan zero. So if say tomorrow I came in and I didn't have a flight plan, I'll go ahead and delete the entire active flight plan. So flight plan zero is now cleared. If I come in cold and dark another day, I can just go over to flight plan one or whichever flight plan I want to load. I can hit the cursor button and I just want to highlight where it says use. Once I highlight that, I can just hit the enter button again and that will take this flight plan and make it our active flight plan. It basically copies it to flight plan zero. If I go back to flight plan page one, it's still there, of course. So we're basically duplicating it, making it the active flight plan, and then we can just be on our way. So now we're right back where we started with those four waypoints. You can see the map is accurate again. And now I'm just gonna zoom the map out, make sure we have all of the points down to the southeast, and we're good to go. One more thing before we take off, I swear. Uh, let's talk about direct twos real quick. If I hit the cursor and I highlight waypoint number three, Zerdy, I can hit direct two to pre-populate this field. Then I can hit enter and that'll activate a direct two to that waypoint. If I wanna undo that though, it's a little bit different than you might be used to in a Garmin, but instead I can't really just choose a VAR like waypoint two and do a direct two to that. That's not the same as activating a leg. So in this case, to get the leg back between waypoints one and two, we actually need to clear the direct two. So we hit direct two and then clear. It clears that field up here. We have direct two nothing. Now if we hit enter, it will restore that leg, our current leg between waypoint one and two. And now we'll finally take off, fast forward to my on route portion of the flight and you know, do what we all wanna do and get back to staring at that little tiny screen. Now that I'm in the cruise phase of our flight, we're gonna use the advisory VNAV to figure out when we need to start our descent. I'm gonna hit the altitude button at the bottom here, and that's gonna give us quick access to our altitude setting that we had at the beginning of the video and our VNAV advisory calculator here on the right. I'm gonna go back to my altimeter, hit B on my keyboard to update the altimeter setting. It's two, nine or nine or nine. So I'm gonna go ahead and update the altimeter setting in the GPS so what we get in the VNAV calculator is accurate. So I'll use the left side knobs in this case, since it's on the left side of the screen. Enter two nine or nine or nine or, and then I'll hit the cursor button. And now we're done with that. Next, we're gonna configure our VNAV calculator right here. It's gonna give us advisory VNAV information. It's gonna tell us when to start our descent to get to a certain altitude at a certain point. And what I wanna do is get to about say 3000 feet, five miles out from the airport. So the first thing I need to do is set our selected or target altitude. So I'll turn this to 3,000 feet. And next, I need to choose the waypoint. Right now it's set to a VAR, which is our current waypoint that we're going to, but I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna enter the keyboard mode and type in our destination airport code. And then I'm gonna hit enter and enter again to set it. And now it's set as our destination airport instead of that other waypoint. And then I'm gonna define how far out from that waypoint do I wanna reach 3,000 feet. So I'm gonna set it to five nautical miles. So we'll reach 3,000 feet, five miles out from the airport. Now when I move the cursor to the final section angle, this is our angle of descent. It's gonna put in an angle if we start descending right now. So this is much shallower than you would normally descend at. We would normally do three degrees and it put in 1.4 just because we could start descending now at 1.4 degrees angle of descent and we would get down there, you know, it, it's timing it based on that angle. But I want it to do three degrees instead so we can wait a bit longer until we start our descent. So I'm gonna change that. You can see the timer at the top reflecting the new time to our top of descent. So now that we have 3.0 in, that's our standard angle of descent, it says VNAV armed. As soon as it's within 10 minutes, it will now show a countdown instead. So here we have it configured, get down to 3,000 feet, five miles before the airport at an angle of descent of three degrees. I'm gonna now hit the ALT button again to get back to our map. 
I've already configured my map to show our VNAV descent over here on the left. You can see that timer, nine minutes, 37 seconds. To do this, all you have to do is hit the cursor button and move the cursor to the left side. This is set to ETE by default for that first data field right there in the middle. You can change it to VNAV on that field only. So I moved it to VNAV and then you can just hit cursor again when you're done. And now when we look at this screen, when we're sitting back in our normal camera position, we can just keep an eye on the VNAV top of descent timer. And when it gets to zero, that's where we're gonna start our descent. We have now teleported into the future and our top of descent is in two seconds. So watch what happens here to where it says zero seconds. It now shows an altitude. This is the altitude that we should be at right now. So basically we just need to chase this altitude. So I'm gonna turn my autopilot into attitude hold mode, pitch the nose down and pull my power out. And the general rule is that for a three degree flight path angle, it's about five times your current ground speed. So right now I need about 1100, 1200 feet per minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and aim for that. And I'm just looking at my altimeter and looking at the VNAV advisory altitude and trying to catch up and maintain the altitude that it says. So right now it says 16,000 feet, I'm at 16,400 feet. So I need to maybe go down a little bit faster to catch up to it. But it's just this manual back and forth of looking at these two altitudes and comparing them and trying to keep it relatively close to the altitude it expects us to be at right now for that VNAV profile. All right, we're in our descent and the last thing we're gonna to wanna to do is line up with the runway. Since I'm not using any approach and we're gonna fly a visual approach for this, I'm gonna take advantage of OBS mode to draw a long extended virtual center line for our runway. We're landing at runway 04. If you change over to the mode page one, on the left hand page here, you'll see that it says active mode is leg. We can use the inner knob to then change over to mode page two. And what it says there is press GPS course for OBS mode. So we need to find this button in the panel of the Duke. It's actually located in the top right corner up here above the right seats attitude indicator. So we'll click that button and change to OBS. And now we can change the selected course using our HSI to whatever we want it to be to override that course. So because I'm landing at runway four, we'd set a zero on the end. So the OBS course will be roughly zero four zero. And then if we look at the map and at the screen again, we can see digitally that we're precisely on zero four zero for our OBS course. And we can see this long extended runway line. So we're gonna fly to the south like this. And then we're gonna make a left-hand turn to land on runway four. So I'm just gonna use my autopilot to fly and intercept that leg and then I'll see you in a second when we get to our landing. All right, we've arrived here in Walnut Ridge, Arkansas. And I hope you guys had a good time learning about the KLN 90. This is something that we'll see pop up in more planes in the future, at the least starting with the A2A Comanche. So keep your eyes out for that. As always, thanks for watching. Leave any questions or comments below, and I'll see you on the next stream or in the next video.